So this is a really important video for you younger guys and for you guys that are, have got projects that are stalled and you just can't move forward on it, you know, for whatever reason. Because this is what hot rodding is really all about. And it's not what you think, right? It's not about, it's not about taking, you know, new parts, pretty new parts and bolting them on and, and watering stuff through the catalog. That's not what it's about. I'm going to show you what hot rodding is about. But first, before I do that, let me, let me bring up the speed on Bottle Rocket here. So we took our pressure plate over to Nashville Clutch and Supply, and they, 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 they put it on their deal there. It had uh, just under 700 pounds of clamping force. It should have been around 850, 900. So they juggled springs, added a couple of uh, thicker springs, and, uh, or stiffer springs, I should say, and now it's just over a thousand pounds, a thousand twenty. And I put this together last night. The clutch pedal feels great. Everything is is good to go. I've got to hustle to get this together now because we've got I've got two outside projects that are all coming together this week. I got uh, Kiwi's Hemi is finally back in the machine shop, and we've got to get that ready for the mole party in three weeks. This is gonna be a hustle. And uh, Jim's Turbo Dart is back together again. So actually, we're gonna go over there this afternoon and get it fired up and, and do the break in on it. So I've got all of these things going on, I'm not going to have much time to devote to bottle rockets, so we're hustling here. But back to the meat of this video. What is hot riding really all about? Right? Um, easiest way to, 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 to explain this right, is that making a car go faster, uh, better, improve its performance is about efficiency. It's about defining the cost parameters what you expect this car to do, right? And then working towards making it the most efficient package possible. An example of this, back in 1987, I bought a new Mustang and uh, it ran like 1580s, whatever it was off the showroom floor. It was five liter, five speed, uh, a bear stripper, a notchback. Learning to drive the car, I got it down to the 14s. And then by focusing on the car's efficiency, not adding any parts, it had, it, I ran this car through the catalytic converters with the stock gear on DOT street tires. Um, I didn't use a short belt or anything like that. Zero add-on parts. I only worked with the parts that the car was born with. I eventually got it to run 1340s at, at 101 miles an hour. And the fastest cars at the time, remember this is like all this stuff was brand new. The fastest cars at the time were running with off-road kits and gears and uh, shorty belts, and they were playing around with different computers, processors, and whatnot, and they were only going like 1350s, 1360s, in that range. So by just focusing on efficiency, right, making the car with the parts it was born with as efficient as possible, I was actually able to stay ahead of the pack. Uh, there's actually even one uh, picture that was published in Cars Illustrated magazine that shows the car launching with the left front wheel off the ground. There's actually daylight between the, the, the tire and the track. And it was all because of efficiency. Efficiency. I used to take the car to a uh, private test session. So we had an edge. I was doing magazines at the time. And I would only launch the car. And I would launch the car 30, 40, 50 times. And then I would run a 60. And then I would run a 330. And I would just keep taking little chunks out of the track until I got each part of that of the run down to perfection. And it got to the point that before the car actually moved forward, just by the way I came off the clutch, I could tell to the hundredth what the car was going to ET. That's efficiency. It's becoming one with the car. So I'll tell you how fanatical I was with that thing. Every Saturday, I would jack the car up, put it on jack stands, climb underneath it and wash and wax the underneath of the car. The exhaust system had more wax on it than most cars had over the top because I wasn't going to let air find any place on that car to stick. That's how I did it with that car. So here's what we're doing with Bottle Rocket. And this is a, this is a lesson. This car is, a, is, a, is a, not a lesson. It's, a, uh, it's an exercise in pure hot rodding, okay? Pure efficiency. So the first step is to define the car's parameters. What is this car supposed to do? So we already have its performance numbers established, but it needs to make those numbers while remaining completely stock appearing with real glass because it has to live outside. It doesn't, it's not gonna get a sheltered light, so it's not gonna get plexiglass and everything else. It's a six passenger car, 
and it has to maintain its six passenger car status. So in other words, at any time, I can put six people in this car and drive it around normally like a regular car. It has to be completely and totally streetable. I need to be able to drive this car from here in Tennessee to California if I chose to, using nothing but regular pump gas and no special treatment whatsoever, or except maybe swapping out the back tires, right? But it has to be that this car can be driven anywhere at any time by anybody and have no special um, considerations. These are tall orders. So the only way you can achieve these goals is through hyper-efficiency. And this is what the crux of hot rodding is. So here's what I do with this car. I have, I have a uh, weight in my mind, right? a goal weight, which is 3,000 pounds sitting, minus me, but 3,000 pounds sitting on the ground with fuel in it, oil in it, ready to go. 3,000 pounds even. You know, if I can get to 2,999 pounds, that's like bingo, right? And then at that point, I'll stop. I'll be satisfied. Then we've got it down to this point. At last count, it was 3,079 pounds. Every time I work on the car, and this time around, I had the trans and the clutch out. Every time I work on the car, I focus on the area around where I'm working, and I try to find little things, little places I can remove weight to make the car that much lighter, that much more efficient. And where you remove weight is extremely important because weight transfer is crucial. So come back over here to the car. Any weight below the center of gravity, which is around right over here, has to go front to back. Weight at the front, this is the worst place to have weight. Weight up here is okay. This actually works in your favor. The headline, actually, the headline is about the only part of this car I haven't touched. All of the weight that's up here tries to transfer back. But weight back here works against you. Because as the car transfers up and comes down, this becomes a counterbalance and wants to twist the car back up again. So where you take the weight from, how you take the weight, is super important to the car's efficiency. How it gets off the starting line and gets moving. So as I was saying, every time I work on this car, I focus on the areas around where I'm working and I look to maximize every bit of it. And this is my take from this last go round. It's seven pounds. I took seven more pounds out of this car without upsetting its integrity or taking away from its purpose. All of this undercoating right here, Adds up to a couple of times. All of this undercoating came from the top of the front fender. When we went through the car the first time, it was rushed. It wasn't exactly neat and precise. So I went through today and I or yesterday and I got all of that. Um, these little slivers and nuts and bolts and everything. So. These are brackets that were on that were mounted on the mufflers, and this was a little extra piece of the muffler. See here. I had originally trimmed these down when they were under the car, but I didn't get them just perfect. They were off on a slash. So now I cut the muffler like this, and I got rid of this. These brackets were attached to the muffler. Where? Someplace. Oh, right here. These were attached to the mufflers, so these are gone now. This made this muffler that much more detrimental to the function of the car. Well, I have the clutch can out. So, you know, I don't use a block saver place on, plate on this because I don't really care if the block gets saved or not. So this was the mounting for the block saver. This was the top and this is the bottom. I trim these. Now, you have, to, you have to be careful when you trim a clutch can because you don't want to upset its integrity. I could have gone further than this, but this area right here is fluted, meaning that it's got a curve, and then it goes to the flat spot of the clutch cam. Now, if I had cut into that curved part, into that fluted part, I would have compromised the strength of the can. It would have had a, an area where a stress riser could have formed during an explosion and torn the can. So what I did was I only trimmed away the amount of metal before the, the, the absolute flat spot before the curved spot. 
So even though I pulled this off the can, I didn't compromise its integrity at all. And the same for the top. So, I mean, all of these things add up. Um, these, these were the ends of the transmission mount. The transmission cross member, off, right? All of these little pieces were this, all of these little pieces, here's a bolt that was holding one of the brake, one of the hard brake lines in place. Not necessary the way it was. This is actually there so that when they assemble the car on the assembly line, all of the lines stay where they have to be so they can hammer the rest of it together. I didn't need this. It's gone, right? Um, there are little brackets and extra pieces on the K-frame. Like for instance, anytime when they assemble a car for mass, you know, mass production, there's always little extra pieces to make it easy to handle or you know, it doesn't pay for them to trim this off. It's, this is especially true in older cars where they weren't really concerned with weight. Newer cars are a lot more efficient. But if you look at the older cars, you'll always find little brackets and tabs and overhangs that don't really do anything. Like for instance, these two nice chunks of steel came off of the shifter mount. They, they would just overhang the outside of it. And I could have actually taken more weight out and maybe next time I have the car apart, I will. But for right now, these are the pieces that I cut off that were just overhanging. They weren't doing anything. Dead weight, it's coming along for the ride. It's not doing you any good. You can go through this and find all little, little odds and ends. I mean, most of them are just, um, here's another little sliver I took off the clutch can. Here's a little, uh, I don't even know what that is, but I, I cut it off real good. And it all totaled out seven pounds that aren't coming along for the ride. And if my math is correct, the car is now 3,072 pounds ready to run. I've gotten to the point with this car, like for instance, I, I said it has to maintain the integrity of a six passenger car. So like for instance, I had the back seat out at one point and I cut all of the extra bits of metal and wire and spring that didn't comprise the center section where people would actually sit. And I think I got a pound and a half out of the seat. That's what hot rodding is. I kept the goal of the car, to, to, the passenger compartment has to stay suitable for passengers, but yet I was able to reduce its weight. I'm gonna meet my goal with this car over the winter. I'll take this engine out and like for instance, here's a stock 318 block. And you can see on this block, there's a lot of extra extraneous metal here and there. I know from experience that I can get a good 20 to 25 pounds out of this block all by itself. And then there's weight that'll come off of the heads, there's weight that'll take off the crankshaft, there's all different places where I'm going to get my weight out. And when this car hits the track early next year, it'll be at that 3,000 pound weight goal. And yeah, myself too. I got to get myself down. I got I to gotta lose like about six or seven pounds myself to get down to like that 185 fighting weight that I'm, I'm, I'm in the best shape at. And all of those things will get work done over the winter. But in the meantime, this thing is ready to go. With any luck, we can get it to the track this coming Tuesday and uh, see what the result is with, with a clutch that actually grabs and doesn't slip. I'm looking forward to it. So you stalled on a project, you're trying to figure out where to go next with it, how to get the most bang for your buck. You're out of money, you know, but you've got some time. This is where you go. This is it. That is what hot rodding is all about. No excuses. You have no excuses to not get out to your car and start chipping away at it, molecule by molecule, to make it the best it can possibly be. That's the essence of hot rodding. Get out in the shop and get to work. So in the meantime, I have to do Jim's distributor and get that over to the dart so we can fire it up this afternoon. And I uh, hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.